now. Yay! Yay! We can be here. We can be heroes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can be my hero, movie. baby. <laughs> All right. Uh, that's actually my wedding song. Um, so, <laughs> what's going on, everybody? Is I the beautiful Marine? Uh, this is our second episode of the Prime Cast. Uh, completely different cast is what it seems like. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, no. Uh, my other co that you saw last week with Windu and Menace. They have some things going on right now, so they weren't able to make it. So we had the great and amazing Mangoose show up for us. Uh, greatly appreciate you being here, Mangoose. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourself to the minimal amount of people on Pedasa or Paragon, the Overprime, that don't know who you are. Uh, I, I will say that I did not want to fucking be here. Um, Bearded told me that he was going to harm my family if I didn't stick around and do the Prime cast. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I... I'm the Mangoose. Uh, I, I do For the Minions and I do the Paragon, the Overprime Partners, um, which is another podcast that uh, is usually streamed on Nerona's channel or Stunt's channel or the Egoist Twitch channel. And it's always streamed on my YouTube. So if you guys want to check that out, you can check that out. But uh, yeah, over to you, Bearded. All right. What's going on, buddy? I'm the Bearded Wolverine, your Michigan Wonder, and excited to get to you episode two going here. Um, and this one is going to be a, I almost want to say a spicy episode but like with the cold map that they have it's probably gonna t oh. it's gonna timber down the spice a little bit a little, chilly. Uh, a little chilly um so that map though that map i love it i love it but i don't but let me hear your your opinions out of first i think the map looks great i think it's cool that they did something festive for the holidays what blah 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 but uh it has no place in competitive because it you can't Please. see um can't see what people are typing and sometimes you need to be able to see what people are typing in chat and wraith is a little bit hidden on the map because he uh he just kind of blends in same with muriel um stuff yeah. like that that gives you a bit of a competitive advantage just because the map is a certain color i don't think uh belongs in competitive i wish it was separated out when you when you queued up for competitive matches you no longer had that map or you 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 could just toggle that map off if you didn't want it on right no i i agree with you in, in the competitive side of it um i mean but talk about like the hud like that stuff can be changed as well though with the map it you know you can change like the the, the color text and stuff like that that'll kind of help help with that but then you have the situations with wraith you know that's a completely different situation it's like how do you how do you fix that do you put like a stroke around them so you just like all of a sudden it's just like you just see this outline all the time guaranteed you know like but then is that like is that a detriment to being wraith then in that situation do you actually get harmed because you basically have like hey I have something always like focusing me no matter what yeah. um so that it's it's definitely i agree with you it shouldn't be in competitive um but the reason i'm saying that i have like a slight issue with it not even the competitive side of it is just like i love the fact they brought in something festive that's why i love it but i also feel like some and i don't know maybe it's my my rig or whatever but i have a decent rig actually um i just felt like it was it felt like it was more like uh what's the word i'm looking for like it, it almost felt like it was washed out like, it wasn't like it didn't feel like it was a, a crisp, great looking wintery image. It just felt like there was just a, it was just all white wall in a sense. Like, like, and I just felt like there could be a better visual uh, representative for it. Again, it's early access, so I'm OK with this, like this, this being their first rendition to the Winterfest map or whatever they're calling it, you know, um, so I'm OK with it. I just think that's something I hope they improve on later on, you know, years down the line that this, when we get the next winter map, it's going to be a, like this really crisp, nice, like wintry wonderland. Um, one that you said that you didn't say that kind of benefits from this map, and I feel like she kind of should, is Aurora. I feel like Aurora <laughs> should definitely just automatically with her theme, she should just benefit. Like just, I don't. Uh, well, she did. The, she did get buffs that came along with this map. What was the so buff that she had? What I missed it. What was it? Uh, they just they just buffed the damage of her uh, some okay. of her abilities. Got you. Okay. Basics and stuff. So. Got uh, you. Aurora is actually a lot stronger. She's. Um, She's not a pick that you cringe at anymore. People, okay. um, people have been fairly successful with Aurora now after these buffs, so that's nice to see. I feel like on this what map though, is? like her little like her little ice glide thing, because it's on snow, it should go like a, like another like ten percent farther. <laughs> like that should just be a thing on this map. On the other map, yeah. it goes its normal distance. On this map, it just you should go farther. Her ice sculpture should should slow just a little bit more. Like oh, yeah, a little bit more. She just gets slight benefits on this map. Like this is it's like having a home field advantage. It just should you should have the home field advantage in this situation. I think that would be good. Um, 
so I, I think it's very impressive that they have already like they just went into early access and they already are doing like Winterfest theme maps and stuff. Yeah, and it's not only the map. Um, it's the ambient sounds as well in the jungle. You get like loons calling. It's a little more forlorn. You get this wind blowing sort of effect. It's just more wintry in general. And I think that's kind of impressive that they have um, uh, the sound design uh, added in with the uh, visual effects of this map. And right. uh, that kind of leads into the skins. They're they're. Before they're we jump into the skins, though, skins. I want to comment on that, what you're talking about, because another company that you and me definitely followed Vault did the same thing, all right? But they didn't do the sound effects. That was the difference, right? We had we had a, a, a Halloween event and we had a, a winter event, right? Right off the bat, pretty much. And they were good, good visuals, but they didn't have that sound. They didn't have that that sound ambiance that you want to go with those. So that that definitely is a a, a raise in the hand of of what PTO is doing. Uh, so I definitely agree with you. The sounds in this game are a lot better. Uh, and then those sounds going into the skins that we we're talking about. Uh, that shouldn't be skin. I know. Or do I want to wait for that one? Should we like kind of blue ball you on that one and wait for you to talk about that? Talk about the other ones first, because I know Shinbi's your girl. I mean, we can talk about either of them. Uh, I think <laughs> the main thing, the, the the main takeaway from both of these skins, you got the Snow John skin, which is a hilarious name because of John Snow, right? Uh, the Snow John skin for Rampage, which he's you know he's a snowman, and then you got the the Snow Bell skin for Shinbi, where she's just you know winter themed. The both of these skins don't just set a standard for like Paragon and Paragon like games. It sets an industry standard. Like these are some of the best skins I have ever seen in any game. And it's in this little indie developed fucking uh, Paragon remake from Soli. Um, Yes, they do have a triple A publisher, but they are still an indie company. Like you don't become a triple A company just because you have a triple A publisher behind you. Um, So, I mean, you get the, the complete overhaul of the of the visuals of the character of the character model itself. Then you get VFX with with it. Um, Shinbi has the reindeer, uh, you know, with a sleigh behind it whenever she does instead of her wolves. And then she gets the same thing when she does a circle rhythm. And it like you get little jingle bell sounds whenever they hit. And then uh, it plays Christmas music instead of her normal music whenever you do the circle rhythm. Um, it, and it plays Christmas music when she backs. Uh, the when she attacks with her you know, Christmas tree sword, you get a trail of snow and little snowflake particles coming off of it. And then it's the same with the rampage skin. Like he picks up a big ass snowball and throws it instead of a rock. And right. like, it's so cool. It's like they did so much with these skins. I, I just kind of amazed. I was absolutely blown away. Um, I did not think that I was going to be spending money on skins for um, Overprime. 100% as soon as I saw that Shimby skin, I was like, I have to have that. I I, have I, have I knew that. you were buying that one for sure. Fuck what it costs. Give me that skin. Right. Now, um, I think the one thing, cause, so because I don't play Shimby, so let me know if I'm wrong, but the, her little spinny thing, right? That's just reindeer running around her? Mm-hmm. All right, so I think what they missed is that easily could have been Santa and his and his reindeer, like the sleigh and everything what? running he around. Pulling a sleigh with a present in, in the back. Oh, it's a present inside, so they're, they're missing Santa. Okay. Yeah, they're missing right. a, little, a little tiny Santa. So I wonder if that's, if, the, the is that an IP right thing that you can't do? Like, is that, you can't have Santa in the game, but could they? <laughs> <laughs> is that what it is? All right, all right, got it. All right, maybe that's what it is. All right, so that's, that's cool, though. I, I love the fact that they had it, because easily, because, I mean, you obviously... Her normal skin, right, has wolves that run around her, right? And it's just like, a, mm-hmm. I don't know, maybe three wolves that just run really fast. It looks like it's a bunch of wolves, right? So you could have done the same thing. You just had a reindeer running around her, and it just then three reindeer running the same, you know, running fast. So the fact that they added the sleigh is actually really cool. Said I haven't played her, so I, I didn't I didn't really get to see it, um, and I didn't slow down the uh, their little video they did for it, you know, the yeah. little launch video they had for it. I didn't slow it down to really look that close into it, but I I loved them. The, all these skins... The, the the event they've thrown off right now is, is is great. I love it. Um, the the and then like you said, the sound animation, like backing, you hear jingle bells going and stuff like that. Everything they've done, I definitely give them a high praise. Their skin game and like what Windu says in chat, their skin game has been on point. And no matter like what point, it doesn't matter if we're going all the way back to CBT one, right? When we played the first CBT, we saw the skins they had. Like we're like, oh my gosh, look at these CB two. Oh my gosh, look at these. You know, uh, so it definitely been on point. Now, gameplay-wise, though, uh, 
where are we at in your opinion gameplay wise compared to right from early access to now like uh, what i think it's approved they they've definitely ironed out some bugs they ironed out like the bu all the bugs we had in the final beta test they ironed out before we got into early access which i was I, I was a bit amazed by um you still get some bugs here and there but um they're they're steadily improving um fixing bugs as they go along um you're never going to have a game without bugs um yeah i think i think that they've done good i still get stuck in when i'm playing gideon i still get stuck in the wrong view sometimes and i have to press my e and cancel it in order to correct that so a bit of a pain in the ass but right so i play i play murdoch so i like never press my e because i literally hate that ability on him <laughs> so i don't know what you're talking about <laughs> um so yeah like i i agree with you they so I, I was the one that was very skeptical about the situation. Like when they came with the final test, I played the final test. I saw all the bugs, all the issues. I'm like, okay. Um, I, I just like when then, then they announced that there were really, you know, early access December 8th. I'm like that, like that, that quick. Like, I know this team can work. I get it. I, we've seen them go from, what was it? CBT two to the final test. That was like an eight month period. They, they changed a whole map. Like yeah. they literally did like, all right, here we go. We're taking this map out, put, swapping in a new one, right? So we know this team can work. They they can definitely put work out there. That's I understand that. But I was like, all right, we gotta we one, you have to analyze the information, then you have to change the information. I was thinking, like, all right, there's gonna be some time between this, right? I didn't think it was gonna happen December 8th. So I was very impressed to see that. Um and I do agree that from early access release to now, the game has definitely uh been smoothed out and it's better. Um, I, and I know you have different, uh, you've seen differences, but I feel that the game is still strong on the, and I, I know we're casual gaming, whatever, but I like the game to play how it's supposed to play. And I just feel like this game right now is it, just ADC dependent. Like you can put an ADC in almost every lane and you can do uh, pretty well with it. Hard like disagree. I know you do. And I, I that's, <laughs> I, 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 I have solo queued as Murdoch. And, and I've done very well with them in solo lane. And I've also queued up with with teammates. Obviously, I, I know I'm going to do better with teammates, right? I get that. 100% I get that. I'm going to do better with, when I have teammates with me. But, like, I've went solo lane with Murdoch, and I've been able to, uh, with teammates, I told my teammates to stay away. Like, because I had the Seb locked down. I'm like, this Sevs can't do that with me. He literally can't do that. I just shoved him all the way back to the inhib. No issues. Right? And as long as you ward, you, you you the juggler can't gank and help the sev up because all right ward let me back up real quick all right and i was able to hold that lane strong and this is after the last uh, the last patch i was like i well not the last, not the not the winter fest patch the patch before the the balance patch they had before that so and i just feel like it's like the adcs are strong in this game that you as long as you have a good adc and i'm not that i'm saying i'm amazing but i'm a decent adc and i can i can take myself from dual and put myself in solo lane on an adc and I can run it pretty well there. And I just yeah. feel like that's an issue in this game. And I feel like their launch trailer, their EA launch trailer, when they promote uh, Twin Blast in solo lane, I just feel like that's a bad thing. Like, you shouldn't be promoting that because you're going to have these people who want to play Sev in solo lane, and then they're just going to get bullied by people who can be like me and go in the lane with the duel, with the, an ADC, and just like, all right, I'm going to push it back. You got, you can't do anything with it. Yeah. I mean, I, I, a couple things there. You know, it's... It's their game, like, one hundred percent. If they if they want to promote um, uh, an ADC solo lane, then that's their decision. You don't have to like it. You don't have to play the game. You know what I mean, right? Um, but then the other thing too is, I don't think you've played enough for your MMR to catch up with your skill level. I think you you are incredibly highly skilled for a new player in Overprime. So the so as so you going in with Doc against an ADC that has a, a, a Sevrog that has no fucking idea what they're doing, you're going to have a good time. Yeah, I mean, that's that's true. I mean, I won. I, I don't agree with you saying that I'm highly skilled. I, I don't agree with that at all. I, I've seen my <laughs> MMR in other games, and I don't know what highly skilled means to you, but it's not that the word highly doesn't work with what I'm, you know, I'm a bedrock ELO player guy. So, um, but all right, I mean, that's a fair point. And we could definitely, uh, you know, touch back on this after I've played a few more and, and uh, yeah. go on from there. Um, I do uh, something you and me, well, we've talked about, uh, literally you and me together, we've had this conversation. 
and I want to kind of bring that forth to the uh, the community members here. The differences between Predecessor and, and Paragon the Overprime. Uh, when I go into solo queue in Predecessor, I can I, I literally almost every time have a decent match. Uh, I you know there's occasion you'll have somebody that's just throwing that don't know what they're doing, but I, I'll have a decent match, have fun. If I solo queue going into in Paragon the Overprime, I feel like I'm playing again. I'm playing with all these people that have no clue what they're doing, and, and like I I, I, I screenshot one to you. I literally had I can't remember what the, who it was. What character they picked? Oh, Twin Blast. They picked Twin Blast, Twin Blast as my support, support yeah. and they went 0 and 16. And they literally just kept on. They, they were trying to engage every fight right away. I'm like, dude, I'm sitting here trying to farm. Like, I'm like, let me let me farm a little bit. Let me get some get, you know, get some build up here. And he's like literally just running it down you know, nonstop. Fight, fight, fight. I'm like, all right. I mean, the the benefit that I was able to do is I was able to clean up what he started. But like, it was like, hey, dude, I need to farm. Like, that that's like just. Uh, and that's that's my games. That's my solo queue games that I have. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, this is so like. And I won the game. Oh, no, that one I lost. The other one, I, the other one I screenshot to do. I won the game, but it's just not fun for me. Like I'm like this. Like this is not the game that I want to enjoy. Like I I'm okay with having the action, the high action part of PTO. So like when we all game together, like I get my team together, we can all sit there and play high action. I'm all about those big games. But like when I'm playing by myself and I'm like, all right, this guy's like starting fights that aren't even like meant to be fights right now. Yeah. Even the other teams not even over here want to do this fight right now. It was just like just feeding it. It's like, dude, stop feeding right now. And like that's where I just have an issue. But you have a completely different situation. Yeah, I think it's it's, it's just all subjective. It, it depends on your individual experiences within the game. Like um, I don't have a good time whenever I solo queue into predecessor. I don't think that's predecessor's fault, and I don't think it's anything that Overprime did right that I enjoy Overprime when I still look you into Overprime. Um, it's just your subjective personal experiences within the game. Um, I will say, though, that a, a big contributor to the, the what you're experiencing in Overprime is uh, there's a lot more completely brand new players that have never played a MOBA are trying Overprime than are trying predecessor. With Predecessor, you have a lot of old school Paragon fans that at least have somewhat of an understanding of how the game is supposed to work. Right. Whereas with Overprime, you get people that have no fucking idea what a MOBA is. They have no fucking idea that that tower is going to shoot them when they run under it. You you have just a crazy skill gap difference with Overprime because you're playing against people that have no, absolutely no idea what they're doing. Even if they did the tutorials, which they probably skipped them. They still have no yeah. idea once they get into a game right. what they're what they're doing. So um that, you think that, that's and that's playing a lot into um it's a ranked right now as people are complaining that oh rank mode has all these silvers and golds and I'm a fucking plat player. I don't know why the fuck I match up with the it's they're called placement matches for a fucking reason. You're placed against a right. variety of skill levels to find out what your skill level is. So it and, and with placement matches going on, it it's a brand new game. It's the first time they've done placements, so they have nothing else to go off of. Of course, you're going to have some shit games whenever you play ranked. Like, right. I think that is 100% to be expected. I don't know why they think that they're just going to come in and automate and the game will automatically know what their skill level is and match them appropriately. Like, that's not going to happen. No, it's not. And I, I've had those. I mean, I see that's where I understand how the games work just because other games that I have played now, technically, they're still considered MOBAs because I'm talking about like Paladins or Overwatch or whatever. When you want to play those games, you still have placement matches that you have to play to find where you need to be because they could just throw you into a game and then you're just going to get pub stomped. Or not pub, it's not pub, it's not public matches at the time. It's, you know, it, you're going to get rank stomped, you know, because they just threw you into Masters the whole time. And it's like, well, that's not where you meant to be. They got to find where you need to be and then they're going to, you know, correctly place you. Um, so I, co I completely agree with you in that situation. Um, do you think that the the reason that you get so many uh, people who don't even know what a MOBA is or understand how this game works in, the, in that regard is because of the fact that they just went straight to free to play instead of having like a, a paid early access? Oh, 100%. Yeah, God, yeah. So do you think that somewhat maybe may could, could have hurt them in any way? No. Because, you know, no? All right. You don't, you don't, it didn't hurt Paragon. Well, Paragon... Nobody but Paragon, Paragon had a paid early access when it first started. Yeah, but it was it went free to play fairly fairly early on. Right, but that's what I'm saying. They kind of have that like do it. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like P Paragon the Overprime 
if they would have went like a paid early access just mm -hmm. to get that enough time to get that you hey these are our, our core uh our hardcore gamers right these are the ones that have been following us they know what they've been playing the closed betas they already know how the game works let's get them already in these placements you know let's get them already where we're at let's get them ahead of that we're, we'll get them ahead of this curve and then we'll go free to play bring in this noob crowd and let let them do their stuff together and then it, it would have kind of then those two that bell curve would have merged together instead of being everybody all right all wild crazy in the beginning Obviously, this no, is, it's hard no, to say no, that right no. now until we get till further on. But like, yeah, you know, opinions if, right and, now. And, and if you, even if you did that, you're still going to have this influx of brand new players that have no fucking idea what they're doing. Right. And, and the reason I bring up Overprime is, or um, the reason I bring up Paragon is, there was most of the of Paragon's players had never played a MOBA before and had no fucking idea what they were doing. Right. Like me. Like. It, I didn't want to say it. <laughs> I'll say it. I literally picked yeah. up Paragon. And I'm like, I don't know. It looks no, great. I'm going to play it. They were doing when Paragon first dropped, but it was still a successful and fun game. Nobody knows what the it, it, Overprime is going to be the same way. You have all these new players that will hopefully get addicted to this style of game that will enjoy this style of game and get addicted to it. But uh, yeah, you're going to have a lot of, a lot of people that have no fucking idea what they're doing. And like, like I was saying earlier, like I've played enough solo queue matches and just enough matches in general of Overprime to where MMR has caught up, and I usually get matched against um, with and against fairly evenly skill leveled players that know now that um, yeah, taking that Murdoch into solo lane is not going to be a fucking good time for it. They especially know, like oh my god, when I see an ADC come into mid lane and I'm playing Gideon, I'm like, <laughs> yes, <laughs> feed me ADC. Yeah. <laughs> like, so the ADC made us gone. It's it's a it's a tank meta in Overprime right now. So I want you to come back a month from now. So when I have all my placements all caught up and I'm still having these easy times and having these T TB solo uh, supports, you know, <laughs> I'm like, all right. See, I told you I wasn't as good as you were giving me credit to be because this is where I'm at. My placements <laughs> caught up to me. I'm still down here at this bedrock <laughs> level. Your play you still got that shit going on. Then, yeah, that's a you problem. That's brother. a me problem. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, no, other than that, like, I, I think the game is, is great. They're doing an issue I have, and this might just be me and, and, and the, my like lack of interest to want to read because of their format. I'm not a big fan of their, their posts that they do. Like well, one, it's like in discord, like, but they do their patch notes. I, or even when they do their events, like it's just this long drawn out thing. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm trying to find what is the big, <laughs> like, Hey, what's, what's the, what's the important stuff? What do I need to know? But I'm reading things. I'm like, I don't, I, I literally get lost to it. I'm like, all right, I'm done. I don't know what's happening. Right. Yeah. Like you said that uh, Aurora got uh buffed i didn't know that because like i literally was went through like, okay we're having a winter fest map I, I knew this i knew we were getting new skins but like i literally when it came to the rest of it like i had no clue that there was even anything else going on with it i thought that's i thought it was just like a, a quick patch for the skins and the the map that, that was pretty much it i didn't know there was more of that went with it because again reading their patch notes it's just it's it's hard for me to do and i, I know that there's a uh a language barrier you know something going on there because of them coming from uh, from korea and stuff like that so it's definitely different but like it's just I, I guess i'm just used to how fault and predecessor do their patch notes like that's the that's the format that i understand i can sit there and read and know what i'm doing but when i'm reading their stuff uh paragon the over primes I, I read that i'm like uh what's happening and I, I, th uh, I, I don't know if they still do it, but I know one of them, they'd like literally just tell you, hey, here's what changed, but you don't know what it changed from. So now you're like, well, wait a minute. Like, yeah. well, what was that? Like, so it makes it even harder to me to understand as a content creator and trying to do shows like this. I want to explain, hey, we're doing this from this, but it's like, nope. That does yeah, like- that was the final beta test notes. That was the final one, okay. Before so they have the fixed that then? Test. Yeah, they, they fixed it since then. Um, okay, that's they, good. They now do a, a change from, change to. Uh, I like that they give you all the information. Yeah, it might be an information overload, but for those of us that like to look through, dig in, and find absolutely everything that's changed, that's there for you to read and find out. Okay. Is there a... When I look at it, I'm Are looking at... Notes for their patch notes? I don't know. No, 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 no. <laughs> that should just start doing the videos like that. Cliff notes for the overprime patch notes. Right? This is what you need to know. I need... But when you do that, I need you to dress up as Cliff from Cheers. Um... 
I have a bit like that for cheers. I know a lot of shit. Well, that's also your name in my Discord, which is called oh, Cheers. Yeah, so, right. <laughs> like, I just need. <laughs> Here we go. I'm going to give you cliff notes. Um, no, is there? If I look at their announcements tab, right? They post their announcements. Is there like a link to go to like a website instead of having me read their little whole crazy long thing? And I don't see a link here for any of this um, stuff. You would have to go into their links and stuff to get to their website unless you already knew where their website was. So they don't so they don't post it in there. See, that's something I think they, could, they should do as well. They should post a link in their announcements. Hey, click here to go to the website. If not, here's all this information. Yeah, I mean, I they have a channel in their Discord that has all their socials linked, and you can just buy get that like that. But I'm not like, <laughs> if you make an announcement, step, I get it, I get it. Hey, I just like I like because I, again, I, I I might just be used to how Fault and Predecessor do their stuff. Like a Fault, every time they made an announcement, here here's our here's our patch, and they gave a link to go to their patch, their their website, and it, it was a hyperlink right to that patch, and you'd read it, right, and. I think it'd be better than me trying to read it in Discord form, you know, like, all right, just send me to the, send me to the, give me a link to it. I appreciate you putting it here for anybody who wants to just stay in Discord. They can read it here, but like, give me the link, you know, also add the hyperlink in there to go right to that page and we'd be perfect. I think that would just be better. At least for me, I don't know. Maybe I might not be the only one that feels that way, but that that's where I'm at. So it's good. It's good feedback. Maybe. I'll hit up Bumblebee and see if uh, they can get they can start adding adding a link to the website in to to the actual patch notes on the website. Yeah, yeah, I think that'd be great. Um, I'll do that for you, buddy. I appreciate that. I appreciate that for sure. That's why that's all we get Mangoose on these shows, guys, because he's just amazing like that. Um, I'm trying to think of other things to ask you because I know you got for the minions. I know you got pop. You know, uh, so I'm trying not to like have you just keep on repeating the same things over and over again. I'm trying to like think of things like off the top of my head, like, all right, what can I ask him that he just has it literally? I mean, because I obviously watch for the minions and I watch Pop, so I'm like, all right, he literally just said all of this, like anybody who's seen this before. So, I, but I do appreciate you coming on the show and helping us out uh, in this time of need. Uh, so it's greatly appreciated. <laughs> well, um, chat asked what our what our favorite heroes are in Overprime. Um, I'll tell you right now, for me, currently it's Victor. I, I, no, <laughs> I know. I'm just kidding. Yeah, no, I've really, <laughs> really been enjoying Gideon lately. He's uh, they they buffed him since the final beta test, and uh, he's he's more than a match for anybody in lane now. Okay, all right. So before I even say who mine is, um, which is going to be hard for you to guess mine, uh, oh, but yeah, before yeah, I even yeah, say yeah. mine, before I even say mine, would you say then between these two games, which we both we both agree these two these these two games are completely different, mm -hmm. and they can both coexist in our opinion, um. Would you say that you're a support main in Pred and you're a mid main in Overprime? Yeah, I think that's a fair assessment. Okay, all right. Uh, my favorite hero, uh, like I said, it's gonna be a tough one for you to guess, uh, but it's uh, Murdoch. Uh, Murdoch's my favorite hero in every one of these aspects. Paragon, Fault, Predecessor, and Paragon the Overprime. Like literally Murdoch's been always my favorite. So the fact that I've been able to play him in all four of them is amazing. So um, when it comes to oh, Paragon the Overprime, I just don't like the grenade shot that he's got like that i i get in high elo matches maybe that's a great thing you can use or whatever you can use it greatly or whatever it's a good skill thing or whatever i just don't like it like it just puts yourself in a bad spot you drop to a knee then you're stuck there oh yeah yeah yeah. uh yeah it's like see, grenade launcher he's got of, i see a lot of people popping a squat in the middle of the lane it just sets them up for failure yeah, you you also see some people that are really good with it that will stop you from backing that will get kills with it when people are really far away, but you almost always see them take you know that when they pop a squat it's under their tower, yeah, or it's inside of a bush, yeah. Which that's my still my main complaint with Overprime is that you are completely invisible inside that goddamn bush no matter what. But uh, yeah, it uh, skilled players can use the E really well, but it takes a lot. It takes a lot of doing takes a lot right. of practice yeah no and you brought the bush and i agree with that i i feel like because uh, i think even in the old paragon days and i could be wrong but i even league of legends has the bush right and i know i know you don't like referencing league of legends a lot but like <laughs> uh uh it, it's one of those like if it's not broke don't fix it type things is kind of why i bring league of legends up in that situation but like if you were to back in the bush or if you're able to shoot in the bush and and uh like in jedi said on this and for the minions like you then should be revealed right mm -hmm. the whole point of the bush is to hide you right 
but it literally is you are literally hidden the whole time like it doesn't matter even if you shoot like you you have to pay attention to the target a ranged character you have to pay attention like oh all right that's where the bullet came from let me shoot here because i'm thinking he's here now right and by that time that person could have moved so now you're just kind of like you're just like pepper spraying the whole bush because you know they're in there but like the only way for you to find that person consistently is to put a ward in there um so i get yes there's the ward there is that way to, to draw them out but if they are the ones that made the mistake of attacking or backing while they're in the bush they should be revealed that you know that that's just the way it should, should work i don't understand why pto hasn't changed that or hasn't made it yeah. that way or why they intend to keep it this way but i don't agree with it and i know there's a few of us that don't agree with that either uh you know you can see the bushes moving whenever they move right move yes yes yeah, yeah whenever Right. So if, but if you're attacking, school, then you could you could just keep hitting them and you can get a general idea of where they are by looking at where how the bushes are moving. But that's not the same as having the full outline. They they are firing at a fully visible you. You right. are firing at some bushes moving. I think it's a huge advantage for the ADC that gets into that bush and doesn't have a support that has wards. Okay. Uh so Medkit does ask, what's our favorite uh gameplay mechanic in Overprime? Uh us so before you answer menace is in chat thanks menace for hanging out appreciate What's you up, he's menace? he says prime spirit what are your thoughts prime spirit is cool i love kicking the deer i love it kicking cool the mechanic. deer i like that it has different um uh elemental aspects to it that give different buffs i think that's really fucking fun i don't like the rng of it though really yeah because i i've had a game where i've actually literally had three of the uh the but the little ice ones the, little, the blue element whatever that element uh, is the water element. the water element i've had three water elements just in a row i'm like i'm like i'm like okay like that that, that benefit as an adc man that benefits me none <laughs> you know and, and I, I could see if it was the if it was like let's say it was three of the ones that benefits the adc man like the, the mid laner is not going to get any benefit out of that like it doesn't like it just the rng i'm just like I'm a, I just think the RNG needs to be adjusted more to where you, if you already have two, you're not the guaranteed your third one's not going to be that or something yeah. like that. It needs to be something like that. But other than that, I do like the the uh, what you were saying, the the different elements you get. I, I'm all about it. I, I like that idea of it. And it's a permanent buff that you get with those elements. And I, I do also love that each element of the spirit has different attack patterns and different attacks that they use. Like the earth spirit is just a, such a pain in the ass when you're the juggler because it has two stuns. Uh, so it can that's, stun you out of being able to use your your your, your smite, which is- I never put two and two ooh, together. Ooh. I never knew that that's what that was doing. I was like sitting there like, all right, this thing's like launching rockets at me one time. And yeah, next thing I know, all right, spirit. now this thing's pulling me into it. What's happening? Like, I didn't do this last time. I was like, what's Wind going spirit, on? Yeah. I didn't put those two together. I did I did, <laughs> did not think that that's what you're going for. And it, here's a PSA for everybody. Don't fight the fucking deer in the middle of the pit. You can pull it up to your side, up on the ramp and make it a much safer take for your team. Stop just engaging it directly in the middle of the pit. Have one of your range heroes shoot at it, pull it up to the to the side, or if you're the jungler, hit nice. it once, run up to the side, up onto the ramp, pull it up there, and then the enemy team has to traverse just a little bit more terrain to get to you. And not only that, they have to go up to hit it. Like, it, it makes it harder for them to hit the deer, makes it hard, hard for them to hit you. Just a PSA for you. Also, as Mena said, um, whenever you kick the deer, it does nullify the defenses of the towers. You get the, you see the little purple sperms dripping down off of them. That means yes. that the, the towers purple are sperm. going to be easier to kill. I love it. So I love it. Kind of cool. However, the kicking the deer is not my favorite. Uh, my favorite is when you have the, the mini prime. Yeah, you, you drop the drop prime. The mini prime in a lane and it will push for you that here's here's you another psa another public service announcement the mini prime when you drop it um if you drop it where you drop it it deals damage so if you drop it directly on it not in front of the tower directly on the tower it'll deal extra damage to that tower it will also deal damage to heroes it will also knock heroes back so if somebody's butt fucking their tower you drop the prime spirit on the the the, the prime guardian on top of that it'll push them out of their tower and you can kill their ass so nice. People use that thing <laughs> incorrectly. The other thing with the two, uh, here's a problem I have with the uh, mini prime. Uh, once you have it, you have it. If you die, you respawn. You you have it still. I think it should transfer just like any other buff. I think that would make it a far more um, 
uh, it'd be a lot more fun if you could take it from people and it would make it a little more uh, a little more risky to actually j run up and drop it directly on the tower like everybody's doing because maybe you get interrupted and killed and then they have it and then they just immediately drop it and it goes after your tower I agree with that but I also see like then you if you die with prime bu mini prime buff then you were wrong by not dropping it just before you died mm-hmm because then you, because by you dying, then you gave it to the other team, and now you gave them that advantage. If you like, gave you, like, I'm about to die. Yeah. Instead of pushing this other ability to try to survive, I need to drop Prime Buff just in case, and then I'll press the other ability. That's what needs to happen every time. But yeah, I'm okay with that. The, the transferring like like a, like a normal buff. You know, you get gold buff. All of a sudden, you kill the person that had gold buff. Now you get the gold buff. Like, yeah, I I am I'm all about that. Speaking of gold buff, uh, I think it was Stunt that said it. Stunt said that the mana buff in duo lane should be a gold buff, is what Stunt was saying, and I agree with that. I I I find myself because you don't really get XP off of killing the buff, so it's not really really beneficial as an ADC to go kill it. Like you're not getting yeah, XP the off. Roadhog, the Roadhog is for the support, and that's kind of so I leave it for the support. You know, mm -hmm. I, I know Windu says that you know he's using a lot of a lot of mana, whatever, as an ADC. I mean, I am too, but I'm not. I'm not using that much mana, so I, I give it to my support whenever they're like, "Hey, let's go help you get this." Right? I'll help them clean them up. But I just feel like there's, and I don't know. I just in normal games, and I'm not sorry. And again, this is their game. This is what they want it to be. That's fine. I understand that. I'm just. I'm only going off of the MOBA genre that I know. You know, and even in Paragon, when you went down the lane, you're going down the hill off to that little left there. You had a little gold buff, right? Mm. And that was now. Me not knowing how a mobile worked when I played Paragon, I left that for the support because it's easier for an ADC to get gold by getting kills and all this stuff. Yeah. So the support, I gave the sense. support the gold buff <laughs> because I'm like, hey, you need gold. Here you go. Get this buff. <laughs> but that's like, no, feed your carry. Get yeah. your carry big. That's what you need to do, right? So that's so, I mean, that was me, you know, being ignorant, not knowing what I was doing. I'm just trying to help out. But... but um like stop saying that people don't chase it too much again i think that's just lack of experience you see experienced teams will prioritize the roadhog in, in in their lane whether it be the the green one or the uh the purple one yeah um but yeah uh, especially like if you have um narbash that's healing the dog shit out of you and needs that mana to keep healing you then that duo is going to prioritize that buff they're going to shove you back go take the buff and then the narbash is going to keep healing it's a very powerful buff people just don't care about it because it's hard for the support to take it by themselves, and the ADC sure is fucking going to leave his lane to help his support because who does that? Who does that? You do I, that. I do You're that. The only one. <laughs> I I do that. I, I literally do. I I, I like. Hey, uh, you you can actually see it. Well, me and Windu, Menace, and we started this Creator Unite thing, and uh, Huddy actually picked up with us, and he was not on comms. But I would literally go over there and I would help him. Hey, let's get let's, let's get this for you. And you could hear me on comms saying that, even though he didn't hear us. I'm just like, all right, let's get this for you. You know, and we go and I go help him lower it down. Uh, so yeah, I'm all about helping the support because I know the support's there to help me. So anything that I can help with the support, and that's why uh, Mangus, I love it when you and me like when we play Pred together because I know in PTO you're a mid main. So when we play Pred together, I love it when you're my support because I know you and me we work well together. We could sit there, you Richter pull, we got this. Um, uh, so I love I love working with you in that situation, but I'm all about helping the support. Now, my favorite aspect in in Paragon, the Overprime. Um, I think I think I have to agree with you. Like I I think it has to be Mini Prime, just because it gives an added aspect to it. Right, it's something that's different in these games. I, I well, not League of Legends. League of Legends has the same thing. You put something in the lane and it, it'll drive it. Right. But like it, it's when we're talking about the games that we know, we pay a fault predecessor and, and Paragon the Overprime. It's it's something that you don't have in those games. Like you don't have something that's going to jump in lane and, and start pushing those towers for you. So I like that's what I, I think I'm going to have to go with that because it's just that difference. Right. Because the the deer is very similar to, to Fangtooth. Right. It does. You know, it gives you a permanent buff that kind of keeps you know stacking. So, yeah, I think that's my favorite you know, favorite objective in this game is that because of that. Yeah, I just love anything that promotes um, skill expression and game knowledge and 
having the game knowledge to pull the to when whatever you're kicking the deer to pull it up to that ledge and knowing from the element that that deer is what it's going to be doing to you and how to avoid that and then the having the game knowledge to properly drop the uh prime guardian the game knowledge to actually go take it um it, it's all cool things i like the individual um skill expression that that provides to, to, to people yeah no i mean you you enlightened me here today to let me know that that's what the deer does i didn't mean i didn't realize that was what it was doing i literally <laughs> had no clue so now it's got me wondering like if i look and i'd see that i got two water spirits and i go to attack you know the the spirit again and i see it's gonna be another water spirit do i do i still take it, it well it shouldn't be that shouldn't happen um you shouldn't be getting back to back the same buff. Uh, uh, did, did that happen like in this in the early access, or did that happen in one of the beta tests? It might have been one of the. It might have been one of the beta tests. All my time is running together right now, to be honest with you. But when it might have so much. Introduced the prime spirit, then yeah, you would get back to back to back of the same buff. Any more, it seems I, I have never seen it be the same okay. buff twice. Okay, well that's good if that's what I and mean, that and uh, I can't confirm that right now. I haven't really paid that much attention at it, but. So, twice in a row, I should say. Right, twice in a row. Right. All right, that then that's fine because I'm sitting like, man, if I already have two of those, like I'm like, <laughs> uh, and my like my mids are like, hey, let's get this. I'm like, no, dude. I like it literally because like here's my here's my question. And games normally don't last this long, but it, if you pull up the HUD, you got four spots, or is mm -hmm. it five spots? Four spots for a spirit, right? Four spots for spirit, yeah. Four spots for the spirit, right? So. You get the first one, let's say it's water spirit. You get the next one, let's say it's the what the earth spirit is what it's called. Mm -hmm. And then you get the next one, then your third one's water spirit again. Right? You said you don't get two in a row. Who do the same in a row, but we'll get the water spirit again. That fourth one, like it has a chance of being one of the other three spirits. But after that, let's say you get let's say you get another, let's say you get the wind spirit, right? So you get water, earth, water, wind. After that. What if you get a fifth one? Does it take away? Which one does it take away? Which one does it remove in that situation? Does it take away your first one that you got? It's just randomized. And it just rotates? And I, I'm not saying that like you're not going to get an earth spirit into a fire spirit into another earth spirit. I'm just saying you're not going to get earth spirit into earth spirit. Right. No, that's yeah, right. And that's what I get. Like back to back in that situation. Like you can get multiple of the, those in that lineup, just not back to back. So I'm just wondering if you, like I said, like after that, so you have four options up there. Mm -hmm. When you get that fifth, does it just like, does they just move down the line? Like, all right, well, oh. kick the kick the first one off. Or that, do you, how does that uh, work? Fifth spirit is heart. And if you get that, you summon Captain Planet and he fucking <laughs> wins the game for you. <laughs> <laughs> and you get the ability to converse with the, converse with the jungle <laughs> minions. <laughs> with our powers combined <laughs> no no it just it just randomizes <laughs> after that okay just, yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's hard and you get captain plan all right there we go he's our hero I'm gonna put right. pollution down to zero i'll talk about something else real quick let's you, go since you want me to deviate from things i've already said on the other shows yeah I want to talk about my absolute favorite, what I think is the absolute best item for its cost in Overprime, and that is Spirit's Teardrop. Um, any magical damage hero, if anybody's watching this and you, you're confused about what to build, it's not in all the recommended builds, but if your hero deals magical damage, take Spirit's Teardrop. It's like 2440, I think, gold. Um, it gives you some magical power, it gives you some health, but it gives you um, a burn on ability hit. So it's like, a, was it Eldritch Flame in Fault? Yep. Is that what it was called? Um, or uh, it was called uh, Ash of the Witch in, in, in Old Paragon. It gives you that ability burn, but that burn is not only based on your magical power, it's also based on the, the enemy's max health. So with when you pick that up as your first item, it gives you extra poke in lane, um, because they have travel mode in Overprime, that ticking damage prevents them from entering travel mode. Um, late game, you're shredding tanks just a little bit. Just maybe that little bit is all you need. And then the most annoying fucking thing ever is when somebody gets away at like 10 health, Spears Teardrop, that tick is gonna hit them and they're gonna die. Um, I, I cannot advocate enough for the item Spears Teardrop, such a cheap item that is so versatile and beneficial. Um, 
even on Decker, I built it on Decker as my very first item. After I build that, our lane's done. Our lane right. is one because every stun ball is now taking extra damage. Every every time I use my um, I I, I get I, I land the uh, slow bubble on both the the both duo laners. Yep. I pop it, taking damage. It it will push people out of lane so fucking fast. Yeah. So spirit tear drop people. If if you if you like to play magical damage based characters, sorry I don't have one for you bearded. <laughs> but uh, well and that's stupid fanatics dessert. So you're shielded from the spirit tear drop damage and. I mean, well, that's that's my my first go to item, anyways, is that dessert because of what is yeah. it's it's one of the cheaper items and it, it gives me the stats that I really want. Um, but you know, as an ADC main, and, and I know we've talked about this on other shows, or you've talked about other shows, and I've kind of been in the chat and talked about it, especially with the la the last pop show, it, it life steal. There there is a very lack luster amount of life steal in this game. Uh, and I mean lifesteal as an ADC main, right? We we know Omni Vamp is. I mean, I guess it works with some of these abilities or whatever. Like, as an ADC, your main thing is basic attacks. It's not your abilities that you hit with, right? And in this game, you do hit harder with abilities, so that's that's okay with that as well, I guess. But like, there is an item, and I can't remember exactly what it is. Um, but there's a, an item that gives you Omni Vamp. But if you read the the passive on it, it says it it only works for melee heroes. So you're pa you're not actually getting the benefit of the passive. You're only getting the stats out of the out of the uh, card. So I'm like a vampire sword. Yeah, vamp. That's, that's what it's vampire sword. Yeah. Sword. Yeah. Yeah. So if you read that, it's like it only gives you the benefit if you're a melee hero. If you're a range hero, you're not getting that passive yeah. uh, ad advantage. So like you're literally just getting a, a, a stat card instead of getting the you know getting a, you could get another card that gives you the stats plus passive. Like, why would you not do that? Like, I just, I, I, I turned myself away as a ranged character from getting Vamp Sword because of that situation. And I feel like they need, and I know you talked about this in Pop, but they, they just need to add more items. That's a big thing. Like, I, I love that they're adding heroes and stuff, but they need items. Items is a big thing. And I felt like items were a big thing always, all the way back to CBT2. Like, we just need items. And I was hoping to get more, and I feel like we really haven't gotten more since then. And I'm, I'm really haven't, no. So I think that's something they really need to work on, um, because as an ADC, like I, I that's one thing. Like I said, I, and I, we were this show is mainly about uh, uh, Overprime, right? And, but so just using it as a reference, so I like to go into Predecessor, and when I play ADC and Predecessor, I can sit there. I'll go into the match. I'm like, okay, who's their team? All right, that's what I'm going against. All right, I'm gonna do a Life Steal crit build this game, right? Or I'm gonna do a attack speed crit. Or I'm gonna do a attack speed life steal. Or I can sit there and just grab two random things that work for ADC, and I'm gonna make my build off of those two things, right? I can't really do that in, in an overprime because I'm just there's not very many items yeah. there for me to grab from, and I, I just feel like th they need to build on that for sure. Like they they have more ADCs than predecessor, but they're lacking on, on the items and that. So it's like you almost like want to build. All right, I'm gonna go solo lane just because I want to play Grux because I want to put some different items on than my normal six items that I've been putting on here. So it's, that's um, definitely something they need to work on. Happy birthday, Medkit, by the way. Oh shit! Happy birthday, bud. But no, it's it's especially noticeable on ADCs uh, that ADCs have probably the least amount of build diversity out of anybody in um in Overprime. Um, mages have a fairly decent selection to choose from uh supports have a pretty damn good selection to choose from but people never choose them and then um you know tanks have a you know tanks are probably uh, tanks and bruisers are kind of down there too they need they need a lot more items it's mainly the adc items that they need more of i think yeah yeah no that's that's i i've only played a little bit of the other roles in, in uh in the in overprime but from what I've seen when I'm like going through the items and picking some things, yeah, I, I ADC is the one that's hurting the worst, um, or the most. Um, support, how is support in, in Overprime for you? I know you're, you're a mid main, but like in Overprime, but like I know you played support as well. How is support for you? I, I mean, I've talked about this with you guys before. I feel that I have straight up carried teams on my shoulders to victory as the support, which I've never felt that in any other game. <laughs> like, I feel that my contributions as a support since I, and here's the thing too with Overprime, not a lot of people will play support. They'll pick the role they won't actually support. Yeah. If you actually support in Overprime and like, 
if that Kalari gets on your gets on your ADC and you stun them out, and then Kanos jumps in with tries the ult and you and you turn her into a, a fucking fish, then like it's amazing. You have such amazing moments in Overprime as a support if you support well. Uh you see Muriels that don't shield because they're so or they only shield themselves because they're so busy trying to basic attack people. It's like hell nah if you actually support an overprime and play and, and you enjoy the role and you play it well you can actually carry your team more than your adc to victory i think you yeah. can have a shit adc and a shit jungler and still win the games just by supporting extremely well and because it what no no good i mean I, I was just gonna agree with you because the, the times that like i've had a hard time again adc main the times that i've had a hard time is when i had you know, a Howie support or I had a TB support or, yeah. or, or, you know, something that just wasn't or a Wraith support, you know, and, and Wraith technically can do stuff for you just because he's got really good poke or whatever. He's got that like ultimate shield or whatever, the ultimate mm -hmm. like invisibility, right? Uh, I mean, so he does have some aspects, but it's still not like a support. And uh, so, yeah, those are my worst games are when I have somebody that's not playing an actual support character. But if you play an actual support character and you actually play support with that character, like I can do pretty well with that. Like I, I that's why I'm like, all right, I, I'll start thriving when I have somebody that's doing what they're supposed, you know, as a support character doing what they're supposed yeah. to do. I completely agree. Yeah, yeah uh, it just comes down to a lot of game knowledge too. Um, something else I see um, people doing kind of incorrectly. Uh, Rampage is a menace in Overprime right now, an absolute monster. He's like the first one voted off and, and ranked. It it, it 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 amazes me because there's a lot of just um organic abilities that have uh healing reduction baked into them like countess's e has healing reductions baked into it there's, there's a bunch of abilities that have healing reduction just baked into them right off the get-go mm -hmm. um then there's also healing reduction cards nobody builds that shit, and then they complain to high heavens about rampage right or or they'll take like like the the mage item sage's whip um when I'm playing Decker and I'm up against the Rampage, I save my slow bubble for when he uses his ultimate. Because people will hit him with all their abilities, all their abilities are on cooldown, he ults, he's back to full health. But when I'm on Decker, like, I see everybody waste all their abilities on him, he ults, I hit him with that slow bubble, boom, he has healing reduction, he does not, he heals maybe to half health, and then we fuck him up. Like, yeah, it just, you got to pick the correct times to apply. This applies to both predecessor and over prime. You need to pick the correct times to apply healing reduction. It's not enough just to get those healing reduction items. That's definitely a step, a, a huge step in the right direction for a lot of for 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 a lot of uh players. But once you understand that you need to get those anti heal items, you need to understand when you need to apply that anti heal. Hitting, hitting Chimera when he first jumps in is not going to do anything. Hitting Chimera after he has a, a couple stacks, you're going to be doing a little something. Right. So Medkit asked, does OP have Blight items? Uh, and Medkit, I think, misunderstood. Uh, no, stunt, stunt misunderstood. Um, OP does have Blight items. I just don't know what their item is called. I don't know if it's that's called the, Blight. That's the problem. They don't They don't name it. They don't have yeah. a specific name for that, for yeah. the passive that, that applies anti-heal. Right, so they do have an item that is, we'll quote unquote call it blight right now, because but they just don't have a name for it. So if you want to search it, like hey, I'm trying to search because like I can go into predecessor right now and in item shop type in blight and it's gonna pop up with all the items that have blight. And I all right, here we go. These are items I want to pick from. Right, then you yeah. just pick the one that matches your role. Right, um, I can't do that in overprime right now and that's an issue that they have they need they need to work on that they need to figure out what it's going to be i know in fault it was called trauma you could type in trauma and all the trauma items that that cause trauma whatever it would be would come up you don't have that in overprime but the the items do exist they just don't have a term for that for you to search for it you just have right, to know exactly. you have to either read through all the passives and figure out hey this is the one that that does this or you just have to you know know what one it is and they and they have all those items. They like they have the mage one that applies that applies healing reduction on ability hit. They have the tank one where if you get hit, it applies healing reduction. And they have the ADC one where if you basic attack somebody, it applies healing reduction. They just right. don't have a name for it, and I think that is a de definitely an oversight and a mistake on their part. For sure. Sure. Um. So I know you've had this conversation on, on all your other platforms. So I, but I think it's a, a conversation that needs to happen. So especially on our show here. Um. Ranked. 
Um, so recently when they made the changes, they when they first came out, you had to have 12 heroes unlocked to be able to go play ranked, right? I think it was 12. Mm -hmm. You'd have 12 heroes unlocked to go play ranked. You also had to be level 10 to go play ranked. Um, and then recently the, they changed, they all of a sudden they gifted you pretty much 11 heroes, right? They gave it, 11 heroes with the Winterfest event. Yep. So here you go. Here's 11 heroes. Great on them. I, I, I love the gift. I'm definitely not hating on that. But they also changed the uh, level, uh, account level to have to be a level five. Mm -hmm. So not only did they like, here you go, we're helping you get ranked. We're like, here, we're just going to hand you rank instead of like making you actually earn it. And I feel like that's an issue early on. I don't know if that's going to be an issue later in the game, but I think early on that's an issue in this game because you literally just have these people who aren't even, well, one, even what Jedi said and for the minions, it's literally just hurting the casual queue. Like you go to play casual queue and you're having a longer casual queue than you do a rank queue. Ranks are popping off like crazy now. Um, but I think that's kind of like they were like, I think I think it's just that the, uh, it's almost like when we're balancing heroes, right? When we go in and you look at uh, look at how they balance heroes and all of a sudden it's like you just you look at some of the balance like, whoa, why did you over you know nerf that or, or, or over buff them and that like that was too much. Uh, or do you have those ones that they, they kind of like slowly, we're just going to slowly increment and then try to make these changes and, and find that perfect spot. I feel like they overdid it here, right? I think having I, the heroes, and, and and Jelly said it on For the Minions that you need to have, and you said it as well, you need to have a hero requirement, right, with the rotation heroes. Right. I completely understand that, completely agree with it, right? But everybody pretty much meets that hero requirement now that you've given us 11 heroes. So have so it, that almost nullifies the hero requirement, but it's still there, right? So the hero requirement, I'm I'm okay with that, but I think changing the level, the account level from ten to five was too much. I think have, having people play the game and learn the game, because I don't want to go in and have a TB support that just goes zero and sixteen, right? <laughs> because they're uh, they're already a level five just by playing three games, and here we are. You know that's an issue. I think that, that you know if I went in there was there had to be a level ten very slim chance i'm gonna have a tb support that's going 0 and 16. i don't think it, it i mean it's a problem like it that it definitely um introduced some more knuckleheads into, into rank than probably needed to be there but um again i don't think it's going to be that big of a problem in the future because once you do your placements and you're placed with uh, the appropriate skill level people and uh you may you may bitch and complain because you think that you didn't get placed right because fucking you because you got a bunch of knuckleheads in your games whatever fight your way up like uh, i've seen people um easier said than done though i i talking yeah. from a guy that playing fault like i and i as a streamer right i'll play with a bunch of viewers right and i love my viewers but not all of my viewers are uh are, are, are high elo players right so because i play with that i kind of bring myself down to that level so then now like when like when playing fault like you're trying to just trying to climb elo you get into a spot like you know they have the term elo hell for a reason like you get stuck in that spot to climb out of that is just hard to do so if you do get handicapped down to that spot because you did get teamed up with a bunch of knuckleheads it, it just makes it harder right you know it's like man if i didn't have these knuckleheads i'd be up here already and then, then i could do my free climbing or free falling or whatever i'm going to do in that situation but it's just hard to climb out of that elo hell uh and, and that's why i i get what you're saying and i also get what they're saying it just like it and i feel like having that level 10 cap would have been would have been the the better way to do that because you're still going to get the knuckleheads right even at level 10 you're still going to get those knuckleheads but i don't think you're going to get it in all 10 of your matches or in let's say seven of your 10 matches or whatever it may be right so that number is going to drop uh to a good a good number and have, all right here's my knucklehead this is my this is my bronze level map place it matches. All right, now I uh, now I can tell. All right, now I can tell that I'm in the, the silvers and golds or whatever when I'm playing yeah. these matches, right? And you right now you can't tell that difference is I think the issue that you're having. Yeah, there's just too many new players. I, I think right. it's an issue that will rectify itself with time. I think people need to get over themselves as far as boohoo, I have to play with somebody that sucks. Like step up and, and just do your best and then just do your placements. Um. Uh, Medkit act, asked about what what the the beta is for ranked in Overprime right now. Um, to correct one thing, Medkit, uh, you only get one ban now. You don't get two bans, and no ADCs are not banned out. Um, nobody bans fucking ADCs in ranked because nobody gives a shit about ADCs. 
um, when you're actually um, competing. Uh, Rampage gets banned out. Gadget does still get banned out. I think that's a mistake, but um, yeah, it's mainly Rampage. I think Ray Rampage definitely deserves the ban. A lot of people will ban Wraith out, and that's another huge, huge mistake. I think it just kind of depends on what you want to do with your comp, but um, yeah, it's it's mainly Rampage. That's that's the main one you have to ban out. I mean, but meta though, so like we're, we're talking about Rampage jungle. Yeah, rampage anywhere. As long okay. as you have rampage on your team, you win. Rampage ADC, got it. All right. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, definitely wouldn't do that. Um, no, so yeah, so we're looking at rampage is definitely you know uh, definitely on the team comp if we're talking about meta. Uh, I would have to say though, gadget would be the mid laner. Like she's like, right now the way she plays. I know they gave her a little bit of a nerf, but it still wasn't strong enough, right? I mean, she's still the the the. Again, it's it's what I talked about with uh, how it's her and predecessor. It's the effort to efficacy ref ratio. Very little effort into gadget to get a lot of effect. However, Gideon is just a better mid laner than gadget. Howitzer is a better mid laner than gadget uh, when it when it when it when it comes to late game. Um, when it comes well early game and late game. It, I mean, it, it depends a lot a lot on the player. But um, if you ban gadget out you're banning out a very easy pick for somebody that's not that good at mid lane, right? Um, so that that's a lot of the reason why I think Gadget is banned. I think as people progress and get a little bit better, they're going to realize that Gadget isn't as terrible, a, 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 as much of a terror as she used to be. She is still a terror. I'm not, I'm not going to den deny that at all. I just don't think she deserves the, <laughs> the, the, the perma ban that she gets. Rampage definitely deserves it. I don't think Gadget really deserves it, but... um. Yeah, that's just going to again. That's going to take time and, and and experience to rectify itself. Okay. So, so we're looking at like you were saying. You would say Gideon is is the higher uh, mid laner. So we have Rampage Gideon. Uh, I'm gonna have. I mean, I'm biased, but I've also seen other people do it. Like I think I think Murdoch is the higher ADC at this point. Out of, out of the ones that they're there, like I think. Yeah, they nerfed him a little bit, but he's still really good. Yeah, so I think he would be the 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 ADC that would be meta uh, support. Who do you think the support meta is? Is that uh, is that uh, Muriel Decker. Decker? Decker, okay. Decker all day long. All right, so Decker would be the support. Uh, and then what do we do? Rampage could be solo or jungle. What what would be your other you know, to, to fill that other spot? Who would you be your uh, meta? Grux Grux for offlane is definitely up there. If okay. you can, if you can have a a fucking rampage in the jungle and a grux off the off lane a decker as a support your Mur a murdoch as your adc and get in mid lane you will absolutely fucking wreck somebody <laughs> that all right that that's a bit of a dream team right there there you go med kit that's that's what we would say would be the meta then it'd be the dream team there um yeah no i i'm enjoying the I game think, I, I think people might disagree with decker though i think people yeah a lot of people might say narbash because narbash. game healing is fucking insane that is i mean i i do as an adc man i do enjoy a good heal uh i feel <laughs> like a, a heal can do i can do the damage that i that's needed uh, other than you know everything else so i feel like that's a you know good thing for me but i i'm okay with either one if you give me a, a decker or an arbash uh i'm okay with I, i'll make it work i i, yeah. I love no, those are my two my favorite well no you give me a Decker Narbash or Richter, those are my three favorite supports. Like a, that displays me. Hey, give me that person right here, so I don't have to go out there and put myself in a bad spot. Bring him right to me. I'm all about that. Like Richter's Which definitely my go-to. You see a lot of people playing phase support. Yeah, I, I'm. I, I. Again, this is their game. I know it, but I. I don't like their changes to phase. I don't like them <laughs> yeah. making her a mage and then people because, and I, I think it's gonna. It's gonna phase out uh pun and pun intended um i think it's gonna phase out when people start to un realize that she's more of a mage than she is a support people do play her as support yes you're, you're not wrong with that um but she hits too hard like i think to be an actual support like the the damage that she can do is just like it's insane so it's if, like if she has access to gold yeah like she she doesn't deal that much damage if she's supporting but yeah right uh, maybe that's um, what I'll do. I'll start styling on people with mid lane phase and let them know what she's, <laughs> what she's supposed to be. There you go. Yeah. Start showing them how it's supposed to go. Um, yeah. What do we got here? Uh, how's my boy Quang doing? Uh, Quang, Quang is uh, 
Quang. Yeah, Quang. All right. He is a good hero, uh, but they made some changes to his kit. That his kit is very skill expressive. I guess that's the term I would use with that. It's fucking weird is what it is. Yeah. Like, I, I don't use them. Um, uh, med kit, what I would do is I would hit up uh, Menace, uh, Menace Rex, and, and message him and see how what he would say about that. He's also, he put a YouTube video out kind of going over his kit. His kit's just different. Like, they added to it. Like, there's like, it's almost like a stance switching kit to it. You know, like, it's, it's just. His basic attacks have a different it's a four string basic attack string and each one has a different effect one one does more cleave one does a little more damage the third one is a knock up and then the fourth one you jump up in the air slam your sword down and it deals extra damage if it, if you hit the person that you knocked up um it could be absolutely devastating an absolutely devastating kit to use in, in the right hands you really have to put some time into kwong kwong to play him well but th that's kind of the main thing. Um, his E is still, he channels lightning down and deals damage, but it also resets his basic attack. So you can get two, you can basic attack, lightning basic attack with him. And then um, his, well, th no, that's his, um, that's his R&B. His E is just, a, is an iframe dash forward. And then his Q is his regular sword plunge. But now, um, you could always just teleport to your sword and you don't have to ult to it. Whenever you activate your ult, you just get empowered to basic attacks, basically. Yeah. He's a it's... very, diff very, very different kit. Uh, again, good in the right hands, but very difficult to use. And uh, if you play it on making an attack speed Kwong, you can't. Attack speed literally has zero effect on Kwong. Because mm. otherwise, you would have people just constantly knocking people up in team yeah. fights. Yeah. <laughs> It just, if you, nonstop. If you play Kwong, just say fuck it and play Xena. So. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. I yeah, Xena is uh if Shinbi and Kwong had a baby, that's that's Xena. That's that's that how that kit got <laughs> yeah, made there. I think of, if, yeah, Kalarian. Yeah. Okay. So all right. I'm glad you brought this up. CC, like I feel like the what is it? The CC lockdown or what are the I can't remember the term that people use. But like you get CC locked, like it's just it's it's insanely long in this game. Like I feel like once you get CC locked, you're done. Like especially if the, a certain team has that much CC. Like I've I had a game where I literally like I got to a point I'm like all right, I could I, if I if I was playing with a controller, I could have just put the controller down and just waited until I went back to base. There was nothing I could do. Like and I just feel like I don't know, I don't know what if that's something that if the game is supposed to play like that, maybe I don't know. But that, I just feel like that was like you can't do anything about that. Yeah. Like, and I feel like there needs to be something changed about that. Like I felt like Fault had something like that, and yeah, it, the Fault did have something like that. I'll I'll, I'll I'll let you finish, and then I'll explain yeah. it. And I felt like they changed it to where then you would have like you it would you would have to time your CC to get that to happen. But I feel like before it was like, hey, if if everybody dumped their CC on you, now you have this like, all right, you have this list of CC that has to go through before you get to move and i feel like that's kind of what i'm going through with op here i'm like all right well now they just all use their kit on me i, mean, I gotta stand here and wait for all of this and kalario is one of them like you sit there or kalario or xena you get hit with one of them it's like all right you're getting hit you can't see anything because that's their animation of them being invisible but also you're just getting smashed with everything i'm like how's it going on let me sit here and take all of this <laughs> i guess i'm dead and then and then something else happens like well i'm sitting here longer like what the hell's that like I just feel like the CC lock on this game is just a little too long, in my opinion. Um, uh, I will quickly address a med kit. Shimbi and Kong are not siblings in the overprime lore, so it's okay for them to fuck. Um, <laughs> it, so, so something fault had that he said for fuck's sake too. That's hilarious. <laughs> so, not neither predecessor nor uh, overprime have is diminishing returns on stuns, but but fault did have it. What that means is if you get hit by one stun, there's a certain time period where if you get hit by another stun, it's only half as effective. Right. Yes. That, yes. That, that's a that's a mechanic that you often find in like uh you find it in World of Warcraft. I know this because I played a rogue that had like a million stuns and you had to take diminishing returns into account. Um they didn't have diminishing returns at first, and rogues could literally by themselves keep one person stun locked until they were dead. Like if they had enough health, you could keep them stunned for a full five fucking minutes 
in, in World of Warcraft. So yeah. they introduced diminishing returns. I think diminishing returns need to be put into Pred, and I think they need to be put into Overprime. 100%. So that you don't, you know, give you, it, it, once you get stunned once, give you 50% tenacity so that the next stun doesn't last as long. And then if you get stunned again, now you have 75% tenacity. So if you get stunned again, that's only lasting like 25% of the normal stun time. Like 100% yeah. am on board and agree with that. Uh, I don't think Paragon ever did it and they should have because Par that was always a problem in Paragon. And they're, and of course, Paragon's answer was, well, here's Yin, just reflect the stun. Here's Terra, just put your fucking helmet down. You know, Slam your helmet down. That's my girl. Like they tried to correct the problem by introducing hero via hero kits when they should have corrected the problem via diminishing returns. Yeah. Yep. I and that's I agree. I agree. Both both games should have it. Like I when when Fault introduced it, it was so much better when that started happening. Uh, and and I think by introducing it, you as a team, it introduced more skill expression. If you were the team that are able to stunlock somebody, because it comes down to you understanding. All right. Here's my here's my support stun. Okay, well let me. All right, now I'm a rampage or whatever. I, or I'm a whatever else that I'm going to use to stun this person, right? All right, now I'm going to throw my rock for as a rampage. Right, I, their stun's almost over with. Let me hit him again. Let, let me like make this stun lock a little longer. All right, you have to time it out and not just unload your kit and like now everything. Here we go. We we're, this person's just stunned forever until they die. That's I, I definitely think that needs to be like that. So I'm all it's about that diminished return. In either game, like if you get hit with a Decker stun and a Rampage stun at the exact same time, you're still only going to take the duration of one of those stuns, which is going to be right. a Rampage stun because it's longer. But yeah, it makes it less effective to you know you throw that Decker bomb and then Rampage sees it, tosses his rock. As soon as you're unstunned, you're stunned again, and it's another fucking full two goddamn seconds. How pissed would I be if any of these games made Terra a mid mage? She wasn't an off laner. That, that, the only thing I know is that she was not an off laner and she should. And if they put her in Pred, um, she wouldn't. Be, <laughs> I watched the last Pred cast. I watched the last Pred cast. I'm fucking with you, Bearded. She was an off laner. Yeah. Well, thanks. Straight thanks up. for watching. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Um, a mid man. Well, one, like, I, I don't even understand how you would make somebody with a shield and a fucking sword. She had a sword. Whatever she had. Axe. The, axe. Yeah, the axe. They see a shield and axe. I don't know how you would make that person a mage in the first place. That'd be. An axe mage. Yeah, like, how? Like, I don't. That doesn't make any sense. Spells. Like it doesn't. Like I can't even like fathom making that happen. Like how? What are you gonna do with this? Like, yeah, no. Uh, that would. I would. I would be completely pissed. Not to answer your question, I would be completely uh, pissed if that happened. Um, <laughs> med, med kit. There are two cleanse items in OP. There's glory of a sign and uh, I think gloves of some fucking bullshit. Uh, the gloves you can use to. Uh, remove CC from an uh, an ally and glory of a sign you can use on yourself. Imagine Terra support. I mean, I would imagine Terra uh, more of a support than an a, ma a mage for sure. Yeah. But even then, I don't see how she could be really a good support because she's she got done her kit, didn't she? She. Um. She had the the worthless assault. Um. She had the shield where she could block it. It was a thing. brief she stun. Had the, she had the the that shaft. shaft. Yeah, nice. I think she had that. Like she smacked her shield with her yeah. with her axe, and it kind of made like a little. But I mean, it was like it was it was a one of the minimal stuns that you had. Uh, it, you I guess if you obviously increase it to be a longer stun, you could do that. Mm -hmm. Um, so but she's just at the problem with her though is everything has got to be so close AOE wise. Like she's got to put herself literally in the middle of the battle mm -hmm. for that to happen. You know, like. Anybody else has got these stuns are are doing it from a distance most likely. It's not like right up on them. Yeah, so. I mean, Steel has to literally throw himself into the fight, but he could do it from a distance. Right. Yeah. So it it can Steel happen. Is a very sorely under underappreciated hero in Overprime, by the way. He um he's another one that I will see banned, and I'm like, oh, thank God. Thank yeah, God they banned Steel. My first placement match, I was uh, who was I? I can't remember who I was, but I went up against the steel and it wasn't fun. Yeah, I think I, I, think I was a, I right. think I was a Fang Mao. I was a Fang Mao and I went up against the steel and I'm like, this, I can't. He he just destroyed me. I'm like, I I'm like this. I don't know what's going on here. I can't do anything with this. So I do love seeing Uno again. Uno is getting huge. 
Uh, it's it's been forever since I've seen her. So. <laughs> Um. Yes, Uno. Yep, yep. Medkit just put it. I see. Love to see your cat, Uno. Um. <laughs> so, do we know the next hero for PTO? Has that been next hero for PTO? No, yeah. no, no. Um, we have suspicions that it's Drongo because they um teased a Drongo skin kit. They like teased like and that when they like, work work in progress. These, yeah, they're working yeah. in progress, and it was Drongo. See, I didn't. I I understand Drongo, but I also didn't get Drongo out of it. Like it was definitely different. Some some different stuff there. I didn't feel like there was the bazooka in there. I didn't feel like yeah, I saw a bazooka. Was, bazo was it? All right, I'll have to go back and look yeah, at it again. Yeah, was there. The I mean, the boomerang was there, but it had three blades, so it's obviously a skin for Drongo. It right. Had like a weird vial instead of the gas grenade. So. Yeah, and the, it, it was a skin. It was a three pronged, you know. Yeah. boomerang instead of just being that normal you know boomerang the aussie boomerang old um rusty. yeah old rusty right um wasn't there something else uh kind of teased on a, another website about another hero or whatever was there anything about that do you do you know anything about that uh, i don't know anything about that okay i'll have to uh revert back to some of my uh my people that know things maybe <laughs> and see what they can say Maybe we can talk about that next week. Um, I feel like there was something that was like kind of like a tease, kind of like how you know how uh, how Jelly can kind of dead yeah. mind some things, but like there was like a website that had here we go, here's ever here's this person's kit and everything. Like they had like they had that announced on a website, and it was uh, somebody else. I don't know who it was, but I feel like that was I there. The thing you see flying around is the. Uh... These are the confirmed heroes. These are the heroes they've teased. These are the heroes we haven't seen anything for. Like, yep. That is a lot of people seem to think that was released by Soul Leave. That was not, that was completely fan made. That was okay. We have like Crunch, we have seen him in game, but we haven't seen him in the game. Uh, Iggy and Scorch, we've seen him run around on the map a little bit. That was a long ass time ago. So they count that as being teased. Okay. Got you. You got to be aware of that. I think. Shit. I think that's another issue that this that that PTO has and you and me have had this discussion before though is like with them with a lot of their announcements coming on a parody account for Twitter you never know if it's official or if it's just a fan <laughs> if it's just for something fans a uh, fan lore or whatever they have going on you know like until like they don't have their official their official Twitter doesn't make this announcement right it's always coming from that parody site so it's like what actually is the official announcement what actually is you know fan uh made up or whatever well the parody thing is fans that's just the fan site it is but that's yeah. but that's the that was the twitter post for the the playstation 4 announcement or for the playstation 4 dev kit yeah that's because that was only leaked in discord they didn't make but they didn't make an announcement about that and they still have it and that's what i'm saying like sure that's they but they, they probably weren't ready i mean if you notice with overprime whenever they announce something it's definitely planned and heavily marketed with a very clean, well-made video to support it and stuff like that. I'm sure that that's what they want to do whenever they talk about console, not um, a Twitter announcement or a uh, Twitter post or something. You know what I mean? I mean, possibly, but I just feel like since the cat's already out of the bag, like in that situation and, and, and one and Ranger was the one that talked about it in discord, like, at that point now the uh, an official announcement would be okay to do in that situation like it's already there like it's not like it's going to be yeah. anything new you know like uh again like i during that time when that ps4 dev kit announcement was happening i'm, I'm looking around like i don't know what you guys are talking about like <laughs> I, I i went and looked at their twitter i went and looked at everything i i went to that that we talked about earlier in this episode about how you said on their discord there's a spot to get, go, go all their links i went on all their links and i found nothing of this i'm like what are you guys talking about like i don't see yeah. this and it was because it was on a parody account that i wasn't i'm like well that's a parody me parody means funny like I, that's anything you do a parody music weird al Yank yankovic does parodies parody songs they're all funny songs about something else so i think that's just the way twitter works now but the, it is. The thing is. It is. If you're if you're not an official, if you're not officially that thing, but you're kind of like mimicking it in a sense, you yeah. have to put parody. So that just I, 
and it works it's actually the legit definition that's what it is i'm just yeah. saying that to me what what parody means to me is funny so i'm thinking this is somebody just making fun of paragon I when i when it, what it was when i first when saw i saw it. that but the thing is like like i said when they're ready to make the announcement they'll make the announcement with all the fanfare but you can't let that detract from ranger just interacting with fans in their discord you know what i mean like i think it's cool that rangers often in their discord and discussing just various shit like that but um i don't think they need to make uh a, a major announcement every time ranger talks to somebody in discord about something oh i'm not i'm not saying every time but yeah, yeah. every time it's an every time it's a major announcement i would say when it's something when it's big it news different. when it's big news about console especially when we're talking about play, a playstation 4 dev kit like yeah. which we all know playstation 5 yeah that's that's what it's going to be right and we've already seen the video for playstation 5 so the fact that you're you're already you're talking about playstation 4 as well like that's huge and xbox and xbox yeah that's huge because yeah. you know it, it, i had this discussion with with windu um because i I don't, I'm not somebody, well, one, it's so hard to get a PlayStation 5 right now. Like, well, maybe not right now. I've looked like for a while there during the time we were having this conversation to get a PS5, you have to be lucky. You were able to show up and find one, or you'd have to be lucky. You found you, you got on the website at the right time and, and it was available, right? PS5s are so hard to get right now. So there's going to be so many people to get, to still have a PS4 and not be able to play these games. So the fact that they're even doing that, and that's where the original well, PS2, PS4, and, and so and that's where the original Paragon crowds, you know, came from, or a good amount of it, not all of it, so, um, came from to it's kind of go back to the roots is huge. That's huge news. I'm not mm-hmm. saying when when Ranger comes in and says good night to the people, or says <laughs> yeah. good morning to the people, or or just says hey, we plan on you know, uh, we guys we're working hard, or here's a work in progress, or whatever. I'm not saying all of that, but like big news like this like this to me is big news especially yeah. when have any of these pair of zombies put a twitter post out there and tell me the first comments not console when yeah no right right so when it's got it's actually news involved around console i think that's big news like that's something that you make an announcement out of yeah it, it's big news but that's the kind of news that they want to prep for and make the appropriate marketing materials for. Yeah, Ranger kind of leaked it in, in, in the Discord, but that doesn't constitute an announcement. And just because this um uh the the parody Twitter account did make that announcement doesn't lessen the fact that they're going to make their own announcement eventually. They just aren't ready to do that yet. I, I think I think your problem right here is that you had to find out from the parody account on Twitter. <laughs> Um, as opposed to finding out from Overprime. And I don't think Overprime themselves were ready for everybody to find out via an announcement like that. That was just Ranger shooting the shit with people in chat. And yes, it was about something extremely important, and it's something that they probably should announce as soon as possible, but I think it's something they will announce whenever they're ready to do so. You also got the the, the problem with like, um, like Core back in the day when they posted that um acceptance letter from playstation or whatever and it hyped people all to high heaven for for core that was just a straight up marketing a slimy marketing move just all in all in all but i i take that as the same thing or or them making an announcement is the same thing as 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 paragon i, I take core out of the situation because i agree with you in that situation right because that i mean you and me could apply for that kit that that situation mm-hmm. we could we get an My acceptance letter company. right and we get acceptance letter right so yeah there you go it, it it that doesn't mean shit right i com- i completely agree with the core situation but the overprime taking their time and they want to make their own announcement for it i i don't agree with you in this situation because the fact that they've already made a video of showing the dev kit like so they've the already of sh- uh, the ps5 yeah. dev kit so they've already They've already teased you the fact that you got excited for the P- oh their their console is going to be ready. They've already done that to us, so it's not going to hurt to do it again when you said hey, not only are we doing PS5, we're doing this as well. Like you, that making that because you say that we're, they're going to make that announcement when when they're ready to. I don't feel like that's going to happen. I feel like we're going the announcement what we're going to get is like hey, here we go. We're going to have they're going to give us the the time frame for a console when they when they announce it. And then you're going to have that as well. And they're going to tie that into it. And I don't think, I just feel like that it just, it just falls into that announcement no matter what. Mm. Like, I don't feel like that's like, I don't think their announcement is for this dev kit, right? 
and if they're not if they weren't ready for it then in my opinion from what you're saying ranger was wrong for putting too much out there Maybe but i don't i don't Maybe want him i don't want him to not do that i want that interaction i want people to get excited when they see ranger in the discord but i want them to make those announcements like all right hey well here we go it's almost like the same thing and even if he was wrong with it then it's like all right hey you, it's almost like damage control all right well he already he slipped up and dropped it let's here we go guys we're, we're releasing this a little earlier than what we wanted to you know you know back to you know going back to uh fall when fall did that uh uh dev uh stream and, and balix dropped the fact that it was iggy was the next yeah. hero right which we all kind of knew it was anyways but he dropped he confirmed it with how he said it and that's not how they wanted to so they kind of like all right well now we're gonna roll with it you guys already know who it is here's this you know you, you just kind of do that like all right well this is not how we wanted to release it but here's here it is so i yeah. think that's how if, if, if he messed up then there should be an announcement made so everybody knows because the, what we've been stressing on fault partner panel what we've been stressing on the predcast and what i want to stress here not everybody has discord or not everybody is in discord at that time right so and i think that everybody has the fair ability to uh, to know this information that that information should be out there if it's good information right good con like this is i think ps4 console is good information and that that's that's something that i feel needs to be posted made an annou announcement with I, I i i don't think that they should damage control make that announcement i think if there was anything that was wrong with all of this it was ranger bringing that up in discord that probably should not have been brought up in discord but like i said as we've seen with their marketing materials it's obviously planned out right they obviously have things planned out for months ahead of time so this the the, the announcement of the ps4 dev kit the xbox dev kit and um more news about ps5 release is probably part of an overarching uh marketing strategy that they still have need time to create the uh the appropriate marketing materials for so maybe he should not have brought that up in discord at all and then it kind of sucks that um the the, the parody twitter announced that i mean it kind of sucks but it's kind of good too for them i don't know just so it, that that's definitely a weird situation um Ranger, it, it's weird how much Ranger is in their Discord to, just just talking to people about shit. Right. But uh, so Dapper makes a good uh, comparison, but I still disagree with. Uh, it says it's like Pred announcing uh, paid EA uh, casually in the FTM chat. That uh, wasn't an announcement, but it was something uh, that needed a more uh, professional announcement later. Um, I could be wrong, but that's how I see it. Um. I feel like that's different in the situation that they they also maybe at that time didn't even know what they were going to do. I mean, paid EA or sure, but like not how they were going to, how it was going to work, how they're going to do bundles or whatever it was going to be, or how it was going to be paid in that in that situation. So, commenting on that and at that point, it just wasn't. I mean, having somebody come in and just let you know, hey guys, and he never actually said a hundred percent, just said almost every EA is paid, right? It kind of like was insinuated. It was more of an insinuation in the FTM chat that it was going to be that way. Um, but so yeah, for them not to comment on that later on and or until later on is, I feel like is fine. But like when we're talking about console, because even though console isn't going to be, we don't know when console is going to be, but we're not, it's not going to be till later. But like when this, especially when this announcement happened, this announcement happened a little while ago, actually. Um, or lack of announcement, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this this comment, yeah, this leak happened a while ago, and, and from the from the from the lead, the lead leak, right? I just feel like it's uh, a little bit different because it's just going, especially because it's something to kind of help keep your console people keep their attention, right? Mm -hmm. Not, but it's not a dirty, you know, it's not dirty in the in the in the means of like a core situation right you making the announcement is not just like hey anybody can go do this but we got yeah. this information you know so it's not dirty like that it's just more like hey it's giving news to the console people right because right now yeah. they could drop a patch for all for us pc players and we get a patch but what console people are like, hey well what's going on with console any news on that and they get no news they get no news they get no news this is actually news for them something they could hey that's good to know you know, you got people on PS4. Do like, do I have to go get a PS5? Like, am I, do I have to like fight for this? Because I want a game on that. I want to play this game. Do I have to fight for a PS5? 
Come to find out, no, you can actually relax right now. You're probably stressing, pitching pennies, trying to get a PS5 for Christmas, so you're ready for OP when it drops. But you didn't have to, because they're going to have a PS4 kit. You don't know that for sure, though, because you know that they have the PS4 kit, but even they don't, they just received it, apparently, whenever they made, when, whenever Rager leaked that. That doesn't necessarily mean that their game works on the PS4, like, uh, sad enough to say. So maybe they're waiting to make sure that they can actually port the game to PS4 and PS5 before they make an official announcement to get, because if they made an announcement now that they have the dev kit and then they aren't able to deliver on that, right? that would just be a big oof. Well, and then in that case, if that is how it is, then I, then Ranger did make a mistake because they are going to have to do damage control because they've already have enough people out there that are going out there saying that the PS4 that, you know, and then so when if they do come out and PS4 is not available, it's not going to be available or whatever, there's damage control is going to have to happen there, you know, and that's actually a bad thing because now you're looking at like not I don't want to say a lot less damage control, though, if you, than if you made an official announcement. True true uh but it's still there is what i'm saying and you're gonna have you're gonna have like fault mistake type issues going here not like early access release but like fault making <laughs> mistakes and like it just hurting them like mistake like you're gonna have issues like that work and then you don't and, and that's something you're definitely not gonna want um so coming from hopefully it's something with them being a a, a, a indie dev team uh and, and being new to this situation Hopefully that's something they kind of learn from as they go, if that's the way it goes down. Yeah. But who knows? But other than that, do you have anything else you want to talk about? I know you do this like nonstop, so, and I know you like to talk. So. No, I think that's it. I think we're good. Yeah, I think we caught up. We were pretty good on chat. Uh, I just want to address address another hilarious comment that I saw on their Discord. Is a guy, one guy was like, "They're only dropping these eleven skins to make people uh, these eleven heroes to make people spend more money on skins." I'm like, "Yeah, <laughs> no shit, dumbass." Right? Yeah, that's like, uh, what's wrong with that? <laughs> there is is what's nothing wrong with, wrong with that. that. Don't want to pay getting eleven free heroes, and the people that do want to pay getting something to buy. You know, I'm, right? Yeah. Yeah, now they have a reason to that buy the skins. Like it, that, that it, me up. that's a great. I, I, I'm, I'm the type of guy that I'm not gonna spend the money, right? Mm -hmm. uh, is the rampage and Chibi skin great? Yes, 100. percent But I'm not the one. I'm not gonna go out here and drop money, especially during Christmas time. I don't have the money to go drop right now. Sorry, you know, yeah. uh, you know. So that's a different situation. What but if they made a Murdoch skin that whenever you use your ultimate. It was actually the long dong of the wall. You whip out your cock and fucking shoot at people. <laughs> Tell me you wouldn't buy that. <laughs> well, depending on the time of year, yes. I don't see that being a Christmas skin because, uh, you know, cold that cold map, it wouldn't be the long dong of the wall. It'd be, you know, <laughs> it'd be a little pea shooter. Um, oh, shit. So... But I mean, yeah, I mean, if you give me, depending on the time of the year, what's going on, like where I'm at financially, you know, you give me a good Murdoch skin, I'm definitely going to spend money. I'm just saying like, I, Jelly, Jelly said in For the Minions that he bought the Rampage skin, even though he doesn't play Rampage, because he wants, if, if, if there is a time that he's going to play Rampage, he wants to use that skin. I 100% agree with him. If, if I had the money and, and you know, I would have got that skin too, because I would definitely rock that Rampage skin. 100%. It's just oh, the time the time of year. I don't have the ability to do that right now. I, I do want to talk about something else cool they did. Yeah. Um, these 11 heroes that they dropped, if you had bought them already with real Oh, money, yes. Yes. You got refunded. Yep. Which is yeah. amazing. Great move by them. Jeremy's, you still got refunded. I think that. Oh, was, that did was they do that too? I didn't know. They, yeah. I didn't know they did that with the runners. Okay. Um. Yeah. No, I, uh, that's, that, that's a great move by them. Um. It, but the, with that move, though, it kind of gives me... I said this in the last episode, uh, and I think I might even talked about it with you a little bit. It kind of gives me the feel that they're doing... I, I try to. I, I don't want to be this skeptical guy, but I just kind of feel that way sometimes. Like it kind of makes me feel that they're doing the, like, hey, we made a mistake, so we're just going to we're gonna help try to fix the mistake here. Like, we're just going to give you this bandage, you know, real quick, because... This is how we released. Or, well, we, we shouldn't have released this way. You know, kind of like when you talked about the the uh, you you brought up the car salesman 
reference on, I don't know if it was for the minions or not, but you, yeah. uh, it was Pop Pop. The you Black said Friday that. Deal. Yeah, the Black Friday deal is kind of like, oh, we're going to give you it on a sale. It kind of still feels like we're still dealing with that. Like, because you had um, rank queues. Like, I, I told uh, Menace, I was like, Menace, like, oh man, I'm going to grind for ranked. I'm like, you know, you're like, it's only going to be you partners playing ranked because you partners are the only ones that have all the heroes. Like, and he went, oh, no, no, no. And then he went and ranked, and the rank, rank queue was like 30 plus minutes. You know, I'm like, I told you. Like, it, like, you've got nobody to play with right now. And then it got better because obviously more time people were able to get stuff or people paid for it to get into it. Um, and But then it was like more like they saw that, hey, well, rank queue is like not happening or it's not existence. And that's one of the things we, we are proud about. We have ranked. Like, well, nobody's using it. So let's kind of, here we go. We're going to give you 11 heroes. Now everybody's playing ranked. Like, look, we have ranked. You know, like, that's kind of what it feels like to me. Um... Somewhat, I guess to agree, I to a degree, I I, I mean I can't. I'm not going to try and change the way you feel. Um, for me, no, personally, change it. The, for me personally, the way I looked at it, um, I looked at it a little less skeptically. Uh, what what I saw it as, they're making fucking buku money off these goddamn skins, so they're like, we can afford to give away eleven heroes now. Like I don't think that was um the Black yeah. Friday deal happening this time. I think this was they've realized that they've got a, a bit of a money maker on their hands so they're going to ha go ahead and give away these heroes and hopefully sell more skins yeah so that's the way i kind of looked at it but i, I can see what where you're coming from as well so i i uh you said that on fourth minions you said that and it, it made sense to me when you would when you said that i was okay it makes me feel like less skeptical about it you know how i was feeling um but i I just like it, it just it was there and I, I think it's just because of how everything has happened like if this was the only thing that happened and you said what you just said yep got it yeah, yeah. that's that's <laughs> makes sense mangus I, I would just be in skeptical my bad you know I, I agree with what mangus said but because of how everything else has happened and it just kind of keeps going that it's almost like become a trend is what mm -hmm. it feels like you know I just kind of that's where I'm at I'm like uh, I don't know so uh, and the, the reverse side of that too though is what's wrong with them fixing their mistakes you know what i mean and that's that's the great part about it yeah like hey you guys are noticing it's a mistake here you go you know i, I i'm all about it. it it's that's that's a great thing i'm all i'm all about it. it but then we're back with the with fault right fault had that bad start here they go but the, and then they start making it but like then these other people are like nobody wants to give fault to try because they just had this like nope fuck them you know in that situation so the them giving the money back it, it, with when they with these heroes when they release the heroes is just huge because it definitely gives you that it definitely makes that feel like hey this isn't a money grab type situation right so that was huge on them for them for them to do that when you give the, here you're loving heroes and if you paid for them here's here's everything back yeah so i also will say that like uh, uh sean Connolly bought a bunch of heroes that he didn't realize he was going to get for free through login rewards mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they refunded all that money back to him too yeah, that, Sean's that was that was that was well before the uh, winter event where they dropped the eleven heroes. Sean's a beast. Uh, I see him. Yes. Yes. I see him. If it didn't matter if it was a, a fault partner panel, if it was yeah. you know anything that we I, I I'm I'm sitting there watching you know the YouTube comments for your videos. I'm watching the you know fault partner panel. I always see him around commenting, and I appreciate the support. Love it, love it, love it. So Jack says that he uh, would like to keep the level ten. Uh, we talked about that earlier, Jacko. You know, uh, <clears throat> definitely understand that. But we think later on, what Mangus was saying is later on, uh, we won't notice. It won't feel as bad as we kind of grow through our placements and stuff of like that. I think season two is going to be a hell of a lot better than season one or season zero, whatever the fuck they're calling it right now. Right. So, um, real quick, uh, Jacko does said that they already have different modes. Uh, we have played uh, in Overthrow, uh, etc. Um, because they already have kind of this back content from when we were talking about overthrow and you guys had that different aram map do you think that's something that they could just kind of like hey let's grab this polish it up to make it look more like ours and make it uh like let, let it uh, let's what's what i'm looking for uh optimize it you know to fit better with us and we can here we go and now we can just implement this aram map again because obviously that was the older style you know and everything look uh -huh. that's something they just kind of like implement pretty quickly because they already have let's call it the the, the bones of it you know I don't, I don't think it's as much as they already have the bones of it as we see how fast they are 
because when they got picked up by Netmarble, like we we all talk about how long Overprime has been in development. You right. got to remember too that when they got picked up by Netmarble, they shit canned everything and completely redid the game from the ground up, and they did that fucking fast. So right. I think that if they wanted to do an ARAM, they could do it really fast, and it could be a completely different True. ARAM map. True. Yeah, I agree with you. Do you think going back to them having net net netmarble? And, and this is just me wanting to know how things work, right? How the ins in the ins and outs work of this. Is it netmarble that the reason that they're able to do such great skins? Or is this is this solely that they're able to do such great skins? Like I'm not trying to I'm not trying to diminish either one of these, right? <laughs> That's not what I'm trying to do. I'm just wondering because I know they're they're an indie dev company, right? Their their publisher is Netmark. I get that. Right. I get they're they're two separate entities. But at what point does Netmarble help and what point is Netmarble not helping? You know what I'm saying? Like like they have the money, they have the funding. I get that. But like is it what is it? Is it is this just a solely the solely let's just say I know it's not him, but let's say Ranger is just literally just making these skins in his office, just pulling out the this shit just fucking amazing, right? Mhm. Mm or is it because they, that tie with Netmarble that they're like, hey, let's do this, do this, do this. And there's kind of like, all right, and bam, you got this amazing skin. Uh, it's definitely the funding from Netmarble has allowed them to seek out and hire people that they wouldn't have been able to hire before. Maybe uh, whoever's creating their skins was already part of Soul League. But uh, again, that's also part of it. They, they already had amazing developers on their team but they were working a full-time job and trying to make over prime after they got picked up by that marble they they're were able to focus having to work their full-time job they were just straight focused on over prime which is why we've had such a, a a big burst of um development from them um the way i like to explain it is like uh burt's beeswax like that it was kind of like a mom and pop thing that was semi-popular and then like walmart picked them up and started selling them uh, Netmarble picking a uh, Soul Eve up is like Walmart picking up Burt's Beeswax. It's still like a mom and pop thing that makes quality products or whatever, but now they have the support of, you know, Walmart helping them with their supply chain and help distribution, them advertising and shit and, and distribution and shit like that. Okay. Okay. Um, all right, my last thing that I had to bring up to you, and I need you because you said you're going to do me a favor. I want you to do me one more favor. Have them change the volume of the startup. When I click what? in, when I click on Paragon the Overprime, and that net marble thing comes on my screen, oh. my screen, <laughs> it, I literally have to take my headset off because it hurts my ears. And I have my volumes turned down in game. It doesn't, none of that changes that initial startup. And it's so loud. I'm like, I don't know what they got to do, but they need to change that because that um, shit hurts. Open your in game settings, go to audio. If you scroll all the way down to the bottom, there's a checkbox. So what you do is you go ahead and go fuck yourself. I like it. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. You had to, to change your hearing aid out every every two games you play because it just killed the hearing aid. Like, it, damn. You yeah. Death then flashbang. And then flat. Exactly. <laughs> Pappy. Uh, man, hey, Pappy. Pappy. Um, yeah. No, that's just it's just wait. That, that needs to get fixed. Like, I. I I thought it was going to get fixed after the first patch. I'm like, all right, sweet, go in. Nope, still there. I'm like, how come nobody else has complained about this? Like, and th and that's my, that's like my biggest actually thing with the, the game. Like, fix that. I'll be a tons happier. <laughs> I can literally, as soon as I click on it and I see Netmarble pop up, I hurry up and I, I flip it off my ears because that's just going to scream in my ears. Like, I can't stand it. Yeah, it I hurts. I noticed that personally. <laughs> yeah, that's because you're deaf. I you're, guess so. you're, you're an old man. <laughs> I guess so. Got to turn it here is hearing it up got it <laughs> so all right guys uh real quick any quick questions in chat if not uh while we're waiting for that we'll do our quick uh our, our little wrap-ups here um magus any, any comments for the community any comments for the devs or or just what do you want to say overall just so you know old man get off my porch type stuff <laughs> same thing i said for bread is that uh you know both games are can exist in their own space and no matter what you say you're not going to convert a bread fan and the bread fans are not going to convert the overprime fans so why are you even fucking trying i think a lot of it is just desperation and fear 
coming out from a lot of these people, but yeah, just just knock it the fuck off. Like nobody cares, right? I I agree with you. Like you, you're not like the games are that different. One, I agree with you that these games can coexist with each other. Um, yeah, wrap it up real quick. All right, so not only can the games coexist together, you were good to go with that, right? Um, but the games are so different that like, why would a OP fan convert to Pred? Why would a Pred fan convert to OP? Like they're, they're, they're just that different. If you like this game more than this one, then that's just the way it's going to be. So there's no point of having that argument. Like Which even if you're is- on the fence, I don't know if you're on the fence, maybe this game style is just not for you. If you're on the fence in that situation, mm-hmm. I don't know, like enjoy them both and play and wait till another game comes out that you enjoy better, I guess. That's one concern I have for Pred. Actually, thank you so is- much, man. Um, because because Overprime has been fr- is free in the market right now, and they're going to be free in the market for much longer than Pred is. Um, I think they're already snatching up players that are interested in this style of game, and it is so fucking hard to go from playing Overprime to playing Pred. Like it is such a, a downshift in speed, and it's completely different strategies. Like it's it's it, it's going to be weird. Like a, it, imagine if you're a new player that's used to playing Overprime. And then Pred comes out and people are talking about how great it is. If you try to go from Overprime to Pred, it's probably not going to happen. And um, that's that's my main concern for Pred right now is that they're they're losing out on all of these um, on, on all the player, the smite players and all these players that are actually looking for this style of game. Agree. Agree. All right. Magus, when can people see you live on the biggest screen? Uh, Paragon, the Overprime Partners. I do that with Stunt, who's in chat right now, Nerona, and the Egoist uh, gets uh, streamed on their Twitch channels. Um, they alternate. It always gets streamed on my YouTube. I think we're going to be switching it up to Saturday so we can do it a little bit earlier for the uh, EU audience. And then every Sunday at 6 is uh, for the Minions, where I talk about Predecessor, Overprime, and Ethereal. All right. Yeah, guys, make sure you go check that content out. Mangoose is always amazing with all the information. And what I love about Mangoose, especially for the minions, is you'll see, especially with his uh, co-host crowd that he's got, he's the most unbiased one out of all of them. Um, so it's great to see. <laughs> uh, but no, love the show, man. Keep up doing the great content. And uh, I can't wait to watch more YouTube content. Uh, my favorite thing from you, though, is definitely your honest hero reviews. So keep those up. I can't wait to see your next one. Um, again, thanks for hanging out with me. I appreciate it. This is uh, a good good comment good commentary we had going here and um other than that uh don't forget to check me out the beer wolverine you can, if you're watching live right now you're obviously here don't forget to hit that follow button and if you're not watching live you're watching a youtube version on windows channel you can find me at the beer wolverine on twitch and beer wolverine on youtube uh i'm doing my best trying to push out the best content i can uh trying to be like mangu someday uh, i'll get up there eventually um not an age in, in content hopefully um <laughs> but other than that i hope you all have a good one and uh we'll talk to you all later